Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of If I Were Commissioner here on MJSL. Um, this week, I have a co-host. He's decided that he's not going to leave me alone right now, and i got to get this filmed. So, everybody say hi to Joker. So, in this episode, I'm going to be tackling arena standards that I think should be implemented as soon as possible. And please go away. And another added twist to my next few videos is the guys over on In the Box there with their show, uh, over the next few weeks, they're going to be doing their own little If I Were Commissioner segments. Uh, and it just so happened that even though I announced that I was going to be doing this, um, I discovered that Adam, in his last one, had mentioned you know something that I don't necessarily agree with. So that gave me an idea of I'm just going to pick something that the guys think should uh, be something that the league should do that I disagree with and give you a rebuttal on why I think, you know, why I think it's wrong. Um, just out of fun. I don't mean any harm with it or whatever. It just so happens, like I said, it was a coincidence that... Adam had mentioned something that I disagree with, so I thought, okay, well, I'll just go ahead and pick something that I disagree with all of them and keep it fair. And what that was is the first standard that I would like to see in the arenas, and that is a standard pitch size of 200 feet by 85 feet. Um, again, follow the template. All the other big leagues have standard standard size fields. They're all the same. Uh, the NHL and AHL, the hockey rink is 200 by 85, which is how I came up with that. Um, my thought there was it basically opens up for expansion and growth to any arena that already has an NHL team or an AHL team because the boards and glass are already there just waiting for you. Like That's a purchase that we wouldn't have to make as a team or a league. Because they're already there, and it's already the right size. Uh, the NFL is 120 yards by 53 and a third yards. Every single one of them are. Uh, the NBA is 94 feet by 50 feet. Again, they're all that size. Uh, Major League Soccer is 110 yards by 70 yards. They're all that size. Now, something Adam had pointed out in a conversation um, that I had with him is the different sizes of the MLB. And that's true to a certain extent. Um, their walls are a different height. Their walls are a different distance from home plate. But with Major League Baseball or just baseball in general, most of your action is going to occur in that 90 foot square that is the actual baseball diamond itself. When a single is hit into the outfield, it doesn't matter how tall that wall is or how far away that wall is. It's, it, it's, a, it's a base hit, and they throw the ball back into the infield, and the play's over, on to the next batter. So most of the action is going to occur in that 90-foot square. The pitcher's mound is always going to be the same distance from home plate. It's 90 feet to each base. So MLB does have a standard. Now, to humor the idea of different wall size, different, you know, different wall distance, uh, I would be willing to go with, you know, pick how tall you want your boards. Pick how tall you want your glass. Pick how much glass you put up, whether you want it all the way around and keep the ball in play more, or you want to take some of it out and have the ball go out of bounds. Um, go all the way to the ceiling with your glass if you want to if it'll keep it in bounds. As far as the walls or the boards themselves, make them anywhere from 24 inches to 48 inches high. You get to choose on that. But the playing surface, the playing field itself, I think we need to get all of the teams to 200 by 85 feet because that's what sports fans are used to. I mean, that's what they're used to. They, they like their standards. They like how things are supposed to be a certain way. So, with that being said, we're going to go ahead and make everyone 200 by 85 feet, and now I'm going to go into the turf size, or the, not the turf size, turf colors, turf condition. 
Uh, no more grass green. Let's just do away with that altogether. We're going to make the turf the team colors. And by that, I mean the turf will be your main color. I'll use Milwaukee for an example, black turf. And then all your lines are going to be the secondary color. So every line on that field would be yellow. Um, Florida, you'd have an aqua turf with orange lines. Um, Sonora, you've already got the red and yellow, but they're moving for a different reason anyway. Uh, so you, you catch my drift on that one. Um, it's basically... Um, so yeah, just team colors. I think it looks cool. I think it would make the league unique. And let's just go ahead and make all the turf the team colors. Um, center logos. Uh, you're going to use that whole center circle for your logo, if not more. In the case of the wave, it stretches yellow line to yellow line. But no more of these dinky little stenciled uh, logos inside that big circle. Let's utilize at least the whole circle, if not more. And then I would require constant maintenance on these things. This isn't a uh, paint it once every five years type of deal. This is, you know, when it starts to get a little scuffed up a few games into the season, you need to send someone out there with a can of paint and touch everything up. We need it to look nice. And then I just came up with a number and threw it out there like, let's replace the turf every five years or as needed. Um, I really don't know what the lifespan of a turf is, how many games, you know, it's good for, or how many games, you know, before it's bad and just not playable anymore, or too ugly to continue playing and putting it on TV. So I just came up with five years. That sounds pretty good to me. Like, five years, you get a new turf. Uh, and then I would also like to restrict the turf ads to an extent. Um... Something like St. Louis Ambush's current field. That's an acceptable amount of turf ads. Um, something like Ontario or San Diego, that those ugly white signs, just none of that. And then I'd go ahead and say, you know, no ads in between the yellow lines. Keep your ads subtle and towards the end. Let's focus the middle on the team and or the league itself. And now I'd like to get into... The arena capacities. Uh, we have a handful of arenas that are simply just too small when it comes to capacity. And when we discuss, you know, growing as a league or growing as a team, growing as a sport, where do these venues put more people if they do attract more people? Um, Utica does a really good job of almost selling out every game. Where are you going to put new fans? And so... So the arena capacity has just a minimum of 5,000. You've got to be able to hold 5,000 people right now. And I'd like to see a 10-year plan of getting our arenas up to 10,000. Um, I know that's going to involve a lot of money, but that's the whole point of this show, is me spending a bunch of money that isn't mine. So 5,000 minimum for right now, 10-year plan of holding 10,000 people. So, with all of those three arena standards put into place, here's the list of ones that are good to go, minus, of course, the, the turf color. So, basically, everyone gets a new turf throughout the league, because um, a lot of them don't match the standard. Um, some of them are really close, but they at least need to change the color of the lines. So, the ones that are good is Milwaukee, San Diego, Kansas City, Harrisburg, Ontario, St. Louis, Florida, and Mesquite. Those all have the 200 by 85 foot pitch, and those all hold 5,000 or better as far as capacity goes. Uh, one that doesn't meet the standards but could, and I sweated this one when I was uh, taking notes and doing research, uh, Monterey. Uh, Monterey plays on a field that is 19.6 feet too short, and 0.3 feet too wide. Uh, but if you look at a game and look at the area, they could fit the 200 by 85. Uh, there's enough room to expand 20 feet, and then obviously they'd have to make theirs 0.3 feet skinnier. So you can always go smaller. So those 
So Monterey could meet the standards and stay put. Uh, everybody else, you're going to need a relocation here. So I'm just going to go ahead and put down what I think would be a good idea for relocation on these teams. We'll start off with Sonora. Uh, now, Gio had mentioned in one of the past episodes of In the Box that Sonora is in the process of building a new facility. So I'm going to have some high hopes and say this new facility will be 200 by 85 so they can just scoot right over to there and we don't need to move them. We can let them play, you know, play out the rest of whatever they need to do until a new facility is built. And then they can just switch over to that one. Uh, Dallas, your pitch is five feet too narrow. Um, I don't know why they would build that facility like that. Um, you pretty much ruled out ever getting an AHL team or, you know, or uh, obviously you're not going to get an NHL team in a venue that small, but you completely ruled out, you know, ruled out a league by not making the area five feet wider. Uh, there is a hockey team that plays there, but it's a tier below AHL, so it's it's even lower because the AHL does require the 200 by 85. <coughs> so we're going to solve two birds with one stone on here. We're going to get rid of the Dallas-Fort Worth dilemma, and we're going to get the sidekicks into a bigger facility. And what I'm going to do with this one is I'm just going to have Dallas and Mesquite merge into one team and become one entity. What that is, I mean, call them the Mesquite side laws or the Mesquite outkicks. <laughs> Who knows? Just, again, this is fantasy. This is fun. No one's ever going to listen to me. These teams aren't merging. But in my fantasy world, yes, they're merging. We're going to get rid of that Dallas-Fort Worth dilemma and have a viable arena. Moving on to Baltimore. Uh, Baltimore is 50 feet short. Um, it's really small, but it has the width. It's 85 feet wide. Uh, obviously, you're not going to fit a 200 by 85 in the SECU arena at all. So for Baltimore, I've got you moving back into the Royal Farms Arena. Um, I've looked at pictures. I'll probably put one up here. The field looks better anyway. You had a nice team logo in the middle. The turf was nice. It was new. Um, <clears throat> obviously, you wouldn't be going back to that turf because you would need a red turf with yellow lines similar to that of Sonora's. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and move you back into your old uh, stomping grounds. Uh, Tacoma, you're another one where you're five feet too narrow. Now, it was really hard to see because it's camera side, but it almost looks as though you could get that five feet on the camera side, and you could possibly fit the 200 by 85 feet in that uh, venue. However, if that's not possible, because again, and like I said, I couldn't get really a decent angle to see and know for sure. But uh, since the diamonds on your jersey represent the Tacoma Dome, we're going to go ahead and move you back into the Tacoma Dome. Let's, let's put you back into your old stomping grounds, too. Uh, it can hold a bigger pitch. It can hold more people. Um, so we're just going to go ahead and move you right back into the Tacoma Dome, and then that way your jerseys match your venue again. Turlock, going to make this short and sweet because I've moved you several times before. San Jose. Move to San Jose right now. So, Turlock, you don't fit anywhere near capacity. Your pitch is extremely small. So we're moving you over to San Jose. Uh, Rochester, you're 15 feet short on the length, but you do have the room to expand. Like, you could, again, fit the standard hockey rink size pitch in that venue. Uh, curious as to why it wasn't done that way. Uh, is it because of the lighting that I've mentioned in previous videos? Because I know it does kind of get dark on that end. So if you were, were to expand it to 15 feet, you'd need maybe it gets a little too dark. And maybe that was the reason. Uh, but again, your capacity is way too small. You got a 2,500 foot or 
you got 2,500 person capacity. Uh, again, if it does grow there in Rochester, where are you going to put new fans? Where are you going to put new people? So with Rochester, we're going to go ahead and move you over to Buffalo, where you'll share the uh, Key Bank Center with the Buffalo Sabres. Again, the walls are there, the glass is there, you just got to buy the turf, <clears throat> and you're off and running. So let's welcome the Buffalo Lancers. We're going to move them clear out of Rochester altogether. Uh, the other New York team, Utica, and Matt's going to hate me for this one. But again, keep in mind, it's just fantasy and nobody's really going anywhere. Uh, Utica, you're five feet short on the length. But again, it looks as though you could get two and a half feet on either side. Uh, you do have an AHL team, so I know the hockey rank is 200 by 85. So I know it would fit in there. Uh, I think you just shrunk it down to fit the goal in there with the nets uh it could be something similar to that of baltimore where you got the real shallow goal because it's not like anyone hangs out in there anyway so it doesn't need to be deep uh but you have the problem of capacity again like i mentioned earlier in the video like you're doing a really good job of almost selling out every game so again where are you going to put new people if we do advertise and grow and get the word out so with utica you're moving to nyc um you can play in any one of the, you know, you can play where the Rangers play. You can play where the Islanders play. Uh, there's another venue where the Islanders used to play but don't anymore. So, again, New York, there's lots of venues available. Lots of room for growth. 18 million plus people to bring in. So, Utica, you're moving to NYC. Uh, the last one here is Orlando. Uh, Orlando is another one that is 10 feet short, but looking at it, they have the room to put it in there. So why it was never put in there, I don't know. So I could put them in the same category as Monterey, where you hold enough people, you've got enough room to expand, and you could. Um, but just for the sake of we us already knowing that Orlando or that Kissimmee... Um, venue is is not a good venue for any team so again i've moved you here in several other videos we're going to go ahead and put you in vancouver bc uh, you can share the arena with the uh, vancouver nhl team you're all set you're good to go and there's sea wolves actually in british columbia so your name would even make more sense that way so I'm not going to announce what I'm going to be doing next week because I really don't know yet. Uh, this one was a lucky chance that I was able to, you know, disagree with Adam on one of his points. Uh, but I'm since I filmed these on Saturday and release them on Tuesday, uh, I don't know what Matt is going to be talking about in this Monday's episode. So with that being said, I'm unable to let you know what topic I'm going to be covering. Uh, it's not just going to be a disagreement with Matt. I'm going to try and wrap an entire episode around it. Um, like I started off just disagreeing with Adam on this one and then went into other things. But it'll be similar with Matt and then the following week, of course, with Gio. So I don't know what I'm doing next week. I will find out on Monday which would be yesterday if you're watching this video. And then I'll go ahead and film it next Saturday. So anyway, thanks for joining me again this week on another episode of If I Were Commissioner. And we will see you next time.